Hello and welcome to this demonstration series. My name is Jason Paul. I'm the Managing Director for Apt Innovations. Today we're here at Savile Motorhomes in Lisburn, Northern Ireland, where by using our new product Flow, I'd like to show you how you can drain down your own motorhome without having to pay someone to do it for you. So let's get started. Now draining down your motorhome has got two distinct advantages. The first being in preparation for winter to avoid those nasty breakages through our uh, most recent hard winter frosts. And the second of course is during the season itself um, to free up that old stale and stagnant water. Now many people have used various methods um, such as blowing down through the taps or driving home with the dump valves open um, and hoping to shake that water loose. But what we've found through our research is that there is no real way of measuring um, how much water you're actually losing or more importantly how much old water has been left within those lines to cause uh, potential damage. There are other reasons why these methods may fail such as the motorhome may be sitting on an incline um, or by draining the dump valve it may have created a vacuum down through the lines. So the objective of this demonstration is to show you that just by using a little bit of compressed air what we'll be able to do is blow all of that water out leaving your lines completely dry. So the first thing we need to do to understand the water system is to have a look at this diagram. To get water into the motorhome the tank is full from the outside and this is normally done with either a typical garden hose or a suitable adapter. Water then travels from the water tank into the pump which pushes the water into the system. Now at this point sometimes you may notice that there's a thicker flexible pipe that enters the left of the pump and a thinner pipe exiting the right of the pump. Now looking at this on a larger picture, the pipe coming from the pump travels further into the system where it then splits into two. The top branch travels carrying cold water onto the taps in the kitchen, the shower and finally the wash hand basin in the bathroom as well as any other outlets such as outside showers etc. The lower branch travels as cold into the water heater where the water is heated and travels onto the taps. Now the nature of using flow is to push compressed air into a system and in turn that air will push the water out of the taps. However using flow as we would on static or touring caravans would mean pushing that air in from the outside. Now unfortunately there are vents in the tank so any air pushed in would escape through those vents. Therefore our solution is to bypass the tank by placing a shut off valve after it which will seal it off altogether. Now we can place the shut off valve before or after the pump but preferably before and this means simply cutting the pipe and pushing on the push fit shut off valve. This is a very simple DIY procedure but of course if you don't feel comfortable doing it a service engineer at your local dealership will be more than qualified to do it for you at a small charge. Now after fitting the shut off valve we still need to get access to the water system and that's where the second adapter connection comes in. We simply clip the pipe and fit the T adapter on the top side of the shut off between the shut off and the pump and of course this gives us access with our flow device. Seen here on the bigger picture, you can see where these two components are fitted. Now although we recommend fitting them before the pump, this may not always be possible. So try and fit the components as close to the pump as you possibly can. At the end of the procedure we can pressurise the system, open the shut off valve and push whatever water is in the pump and the lines leading to the shut off back down into the water tank. Now some pumps don't allow water to be pushed in reverse, so by running the pump dry after the water tank has been drained, any water in the pump will be pushed out beyond the T adapter and therefore pushed out of the taps. But the fact that the T adapter is fitted on the cold line, the air will go through the water heater and push the water out of the hot taps also. Now how we intend to carry out this uh, drain down procedure is by using our new flow motorhome drainage kit. And what we have here on the right hand side is our patented flow device. On the left hand side at the top is a shut off valve and at the bottom is a uh, T adapter. What you will also find in the pack is a demonstration DVD and what that will do is explain how to fit the apparatus and also how to carry down. There are instructions um, and some cautions on the back and we very much suggest that you read those thoroughly. So how do we intend to get the water out of this lovely new motorhome? Well, by using our new patented flow device. Now, this end is going to connect to your water system via one of your cold water lines. And this end is connected to an air supply via a foot pump or a little 12 volt compressor that you could plug into the cigarette lighter of your uh, motorhome. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to build up a little bit of pressure inside that water system, a little bit like putting air into a balloon. 
once pressure has been put into the system and you release a tap inside the motorhome that water is going to be pushed out. Now the beauty of this system if it is connected to the cold water line what it will do is it will actually go through your water heater as well and push on to the hot taps so therefore any water that is contained within the cold water lines and the hot water lines will be removed. Now we need to fit two other components into the water system as well. The first would be this little shut off valve. This needs to be fitted after the water tank so that when we do push air into the system we can shut this off and the air doesn't get through to the water tank itself. The reason for that is, is that your water tank has vents in it which stops um, vacuum occurring whenever you turn on your water taps. Now if we were to push air into the tank and it escapes through the vent it's a little bit like a hole being in the balloon and we won't be able to pressurize that air. So that shuts off the tank. The next thing we need to fit is this little T adapter and this will fit onto the cold water line preferably after the shut off and before the pump or as close to after the pump as possible. So that what we can do is then take the flow device and screw it on to the adapter itself and then connect your air line to it. So the first thing we need to do is fit our shut off valve. We'll put that close to the pump and then we'll find a place to fit that T. So let's go and do that now. Now what you'll need to do before carrying out any work to your water system is to turn off your onboard pump and that should stop any excess water from pumping out whenever you cut into the lines to fit the adapters. So we'll just turn it off at the main control panel. Now I'd like to show you how to fit the motorhome kit. What we're going to do is fit the shutoff valve here and the T adapter underneath. The shutoff valve, what we want to do is place it somewhere between the cold water tank and the pump on the blue line. Now, what you'll find is that most UK motorhomes have a blue pipework system within them. Now, it's a 12mm semi-rigid pipework and what that will do is just simply push fit into the uh, shutoff valve. Now, what we need to do is to cut the pipe. Uh, so what I would recommend you use is something like this, a pair of um, pipe cutters out of uh, a plumber's merchants or indeed a sharp pair of saccateurs. Now, what you can do, quite simply, cut the pipe and have the two ends. Now, what you do then is just place the pipe and push it home and that's it. That's a push fit connection. Now there's a little lug here and what you can do if you need to remove the pipe to cut a little bit more off and it's better to cut a little bit at a time is just pull that lug back and you can remove that pipe again. Okay, some continental motorhomes have this, which is a more flexible, thicker pipe. Um, it's a braided pipe, something similar to a garden hose. The same thing applies, just use the snips again and cut. Now, the push fit connections won't work for these, but what we do sell as well um, is a continental uh, motorhome conversion kit. Now, what that is, is just a simple little pipe with straight edge to it and a barbed end to it as well. Now what you can do is just place that straight end into the shut off valve and push that home. Then what you can do is then fit the barbed end into the pipe. Now you may wish to use a little bit of washing up liquid um, or a hair dryer just to soften the, the end off the hose and then you can push that home like so. Now we find the location of the water pump and it's right under this bed at the back of the motorhome. And what we want to do now is fit the uh, little shut off valve um, so that that will stop any water or air going to the water tank or indeed coming from the water tank. Now if we take a look at this picture, what you'll see is that there is a blue line that comes from the water tank, enters the pump on the left hand side, then the blue line comes out at the right hand side and that blue line will then split into two. The left hand branch will move on to all of the cold taps in the motorhome and the right hand branch will go to the water heater where the water is then heated and then go to all of the hot taps and showers etc in the motorhome. So what we want to do now is fit that shut off valve. Okay so that's the shut off valve fitted um, as you can see uh, by this picture and we have fitted it to the left hand side that would be the input part to the pump. So now that that's fitted the next thing we want to do is to fit the uh, retro T adapter. Um, now this is obviously for connection to our flow device. Now one thing I'd recommend to you is that you place this T adapter after the shut off valve and before the pump. Now that isn't always possible due to space restrictions but try and get it as close to the pump as possible even if it means fitting it in a cupboard close by. So now that that's fitted you can see that it's quite accessible um, and you can see there that I can turn it on and turn it off uh, quite easily. Now one thing I will say to you is that on normal everyday uh, operating of your motorhome uh, what you want is the shut off to be turned 
to the on position to allow water to come from your water tank but in your retro T what you want to do is have that switch to the off position so that water in a normal everyday doesn't actually pour out of that adapter. Okay so the next thing I want to do is show you just how easy it is to carry out a drain down. Now when attaching flow what you're going to find is that you have a little connector here, um, a typical um, hose type connector um, and what you can do is pull the sheath back on this and the two parts will come apart. Now. Um, what you'll find is that you have a three quarter inch connection and the beauty of that is is that that can be connected to say a power hose or an outside tap and you can drain down a home or a holiday home. Um, what you'll also find here is that you have a little green nut and that's a half inch connection and that's what we're going to screw onto our adapter. Um, now the beauty of this is is that once you get that screwed on and it's a nice firm fit what you can do is just leave it there um, and then whenever you wish to do a drain down you can just connect on your flow uh, just like this. So let's get that connected. Okay so the next thing I'd like to talk to you about is how do we get air into flow uh, and through into the system. Well on flow we have a typical car or bicycle type valve so something uh, like the old trusty foot pump would do um, as long as you have an accurate gauge. Um, we have this type of uh, bicycle pump um, with a connection on the end of it. Um, you can use a typical little 12 volt tire compressor um, the sort that plugs into the cigarette lighter of the car. Um, we also have this uh, handheld device that if you pull the trigger on it it acts something like a, a cordless drill and there's a gauge on the back of it there. Something that I use and it's just handy to have is this battery pack type compressor. Um, it has jump leads on the side of it and it's just a very handy thing to have around. Now the one thing that it does have on the back of it here is there's a digital gauge um, and an on off switch and what we can do here is just pull out um, the valve type connection. And that brings us on to another important point. What sort of pressure do we put into the system? Well whenever you turn on your taps in inside the motorhome. What will happen is the water will come out under a certain amount of pressure and that pressure is gauged in bar. So one bar, two bar, etc. Now one bar is the equivalent of 15 psi and that's what we want to use. So making sure that you have an accurate gauge just by pushing 15 psi in it keeps it nice and safe. Um, the onboard pump is only uh, capable of taking up to 20 psi of pressure so we want to make sure that we stay around the 15. So let's get the compressor connected and we'll do our first drain down. As part of the drain down it's necessary to open the dump valve and drain the water heater. Once that's drained make sure all of the taps are turned off in the kitchen, the shower and the bathroom wash hand basin. Now by following the motorhome manufacturer's instructions it's also important that after you drain the water tank that you switch on your onboard pump and that you open a tap for a few seconds. This will run the pump dry of any water that may have been trapped in there. So now that we're back in the bedroom again, you may remember that we fitted the shutoff valve beside the pump. Now that was left in the open position so for everyday use water would be able to come from the water tank and through to the water system. We're going to push compressed air into that system and we don't want that air to go through to the tank so we need to turn that to the off position. Also as we drain the water heater using the dump valve, the compressed air that we're going to push in is actually going to travel through the cold line until it goes to the water heater through the water heater and onto the hot taps. So we want to make sure that that dump valve is now turned off. Now you may remember whenever we fitted the T adapter we had left it in the off position again for everyday use so that water could just travel past it and onto the taps and the shower etc. What we want to do now that flow is connected and the compressor is connected we want to put that to the on position. So now that the system is sealed what we want to do is connect up our compressor and as you can see here we've fitted the airline to flow. So now that everything is connected we're now ready to carry out our first drain down. Now I'd like to just describe the procedure to you. Um, what we're going to do is build up pressurized air into the system and when we go to our first tap the pressurized air will push that water out of that particular tap. We then close off the tap and then build up pressure one more time and then open the tap that's next to it. So it doesn't really matter whether you start with the hot or the cold, I just like to do them. I'll do the kitchen first, then I'll move on to the bathroom for the wash hand basin and then I'll do the shower. But you must drain um, the hot and the cold separately because there are two pipes leading to those particular taps and you need to drain each pipe individually. So 
now that the compressor is built up to 15 psi we're now ready to drain our first tap now i'm in the kitchen here and I've, what i've done is just turned the tap all the way to the hot side and we're going to drain the hot first of all so um what i would recommend is that you carry a little cloth um, so that you can hold it over the front of the tap because remember that the air is actually chasing the water out so whenever all the water comes out of this particular pipe there will be quite a large spit and it basically just stops the water from splashing around so let's do that now Okay, so the compressor is built back up to 15 psi, so we can now empty the cold tap. So we'll just push it all the way to the cold, and remember using our cloth, put it over the tap and release. Okay, so that's the hot and the cold both dry. We'll just move on to the bathroom wash hand basin. Okay, so the pressure is now built up to 15 psi, so we'll just turn this tap all the way to hot, use your cloth over the end, and we can drain. Okay, that's that tap dry. We'll just pressurize again and do the cold. Okay, so it's important that we do the shower. So we've compressed up one more time to 15 psi. We'll turn the shower all the way to hot. Lift down our shower head just to help the water push out. And we'll turn it on. Okay, so that's the hot drain down. What we'll do, just close that off again and we'll compress up one more time and then do the cold. So that's the system almost drained, um, but you may remember that we fitted the shutoff valve to the left of the pump. Well, what we would recommend is that um, you build up pressure in the system one last time with your compressor and then you turn that shutoff valve to the open position. What that will do is it will push any water that was trapped between the shutoff valve and indeed the cold water tank, it will push that back down into the tank. What we would then recommend is that you obviously uh, drain down that tank uh, to get rid of that cold water if, if you're laying up for uh, a period of time. Now as mentioned before, some pumps may not allow water to be pushed back down through them in reverse and you will know this is the case as the pressure inside the compressor will not drop completely whenever you open up the shutoff valve. Another way of testing this is if you were to open up a tap somewhere in the motorhome, any pressure that was built up in there, if it hasn't been released through the shutoff valve, it will actually be released through the tap so you will know that the pump is not allowing water to be pushed back through it. So as a belt and braces approach at the end of the procedure, once again turn on the pump and open up the tap for a few seconds just to make sure that no water is trapped in there. Also as a first time use you should unscrew or disconnect the filter bottle just to make sure that there's no water trapped in there also. These can be very prone to breaking in a winter frost. Finally, and this is imperative, if you're laying up for the winter, what you need to do is leave your taps all in the uh, on position. Now, if you have mixer taps, what we would recommend is that you actually put them between the hot and the cold. Just leave it in the middle, but you leave them on the open position. Now, we would recommend that you do that for the kitchen, uh, also the wash hand basin in the bathroom, and finally the shower. And that's it, the motorhome kit is fitted, the drain down has been carried out and that should keep you going through the winter months without your pipes freezing or any vital components getting broken. It's also a good way for every once in a while just to get rid of that old stale water. So I'd like to thank uh, Savile Motorhomes for their very, very kind participation in making this film and I'd like to wish you all the very best with your motorhome and thank you for watching.